Hello, here we are at session number five of uh, Connect Season 2, The Helper. I hope you're being blessed. I hope you're being encouraged and informed as you do these studies. Um, it's good to hear some of the feedback that we're getting about how uh, people are being uh, challenged and encouraged uh, by this teaching on the Holy Spirit. Tonight we're looking at how the Helper, the Holy Spirit, makes us a part of God's family. When we read the New Testament, we find that the Holy Spirit uh, does a couple of things that make us part of God's family, or there are a couple of things that are attributed to his action. First of all, uh, the Bible, the New Testament, talks about us being born of the Spirit and the Spirit's work in regeneration. John 3.3 3 talks about how we are born again uh, of the Spirit of God. And Paul talks in Titus uh, 3, 5, uh, how it's through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit that we became Christians in the first place. So we have this very, very powerful image of how the Holy Spirit somehow brings about a new spirit within us. He uh, regenerates us. We're uh, familiar with that term. We talk about urban regeneration. Um, we talk about uh, urban regeneration when we look at a particular area of a city or a town which has been transformed. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in our hearts. He makes us new. He gives us a new spirit. But the Bible also talks about us being adopted into God's family. We are his sons through adoption. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 talks about how God has adopted us, how we who were once slaves to sin have now been, been made part of God's family through the Spirit's work in adoption. You might ask the question, are we adopted or are we born again? Are we, as John 1 says, are we born of uh, the Father? We're born of God, not of uh, the will of a human being or anything like that. Um, that we're born into God's family, or are we adopted into God's family? Well, I want to suggest to you uh, that the New Testament authors, Jesus himself, Paul, uh, and, and John in his gospel, use both of these images, both of these pictures, to reinforce just how close a relationship God has with us. The image of being born again emphasizes the fact um, that we have been totally transformed. Um, in the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, um, we are a new creation. Um, we, we've been born again. Um, we're no longer what we were. We're new creations in Christ Jesus. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. If any person comes to know Jesus, um, they're made new. So we've been totally transformed in the inside. But it's almost as though to reinforce this, and the biblical writers take up this idea of us being adopted into God's family. In the ancient world, if you were adopted, I, it, it meant that you were part of the family just as much as a natural born child. You had rights that couldn't be taken away from you under Roman law. So we're both born again and we're adopted. In Romans chapter 8, Paul takes up this uh, theme of adoption in a, in, a, in a way that really helps to unpack the whole idea and its implications for us as Christians. Um, Romans 8, uh, 14 and 15, and then 15 through 17, and then uh, 25 to 27 uh, spell out just what it means to be an adopted child of God. In verses 14 and 15, Paul says that we have not been given a spirit of fear, uh, but we have been given the spirit of sonship or the spirit of adoption. And he says that uh, because of this, we are able to cry, Abba, Father, verses 15 to 17. So what's he talking about here? Well, first of all, because we are the adopted sons of God, that means that we have 
a very, very certain fixed identity. By the way, just in case you think that this um, language doesn't apply to, to females or that in some way Paul's using sexist language, nothing could be further from the truth. It was simply that in the, in the ancient world, in the Roman world in particular, it was the males that inherited everything. So when Paul says that we're the adopted sons of God, it's probably better for us to translate that children of God. Um, he's simply stressing the fact that we have all the rights of inheritance. So we are God's children. You are God's child because you have been brought into his family. Um, you have been adopted into his family. And that is a serious thing indeed. Um, no one can take you out of his family. Um, the, in Roman law, once a child was adopted, that was it. Um, it was a big, big deal. And when you came to know Christ, um, the Spirit of God placed you into God's family by adoption. It means that you share um, those inheritance rights that Jesus has. And Romans 8 talks about this, that, um, that God doesn't withhold anything from us. We have been made co-heirs with Jesus Christ. And we're no longer slaves. We're no longer uh, no longer have a spirit of fear or a spirit of, of slavery. Um, we are the sons of God. We are the children of God. That's your identity. No matter how you feel, no matter uh, what others say about you, if you know Jesus, you are a child of God. So when we understand what the Holy Spirit does through adoption to sonship, um, it, it underlines the fact that we belong to God. We are his and he is ours. That is our true identity. No matter what others have said about you, no matter even what you feel about yourself or think about yourself, if you know Jesus, then you are a child of God. Remember what uh, John said in his gospel, um, John 1.12, to as many as received him, to those he gave the, the right or the ability to become the children of God. So you're in the family. That's who you are. Adoption by the Spirit explains to us who we are, your true identity. A second thing that comes out of this passage in Romans is that we have intimacy with God. Notice that Paul says here in verses 15, uh, to 17, that we cry through the Spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. A Abba is a, a word that's it's maybe not uh, that easy to translate. It's probably the, the, the closest equivalent um, that we have in our languages is Daddy or Dad. Um, some of the older translators and, and commentators um, would talk in terms of Papa, but we tend not to, to use uh, that term in the way that we would use dad or daddy. This, is, this word Abba is the word that would have been on um, the, a small child um, who might not have a, a great grasp of, of the Aramaic or Hebrew language um, in, in Jesus' day. But this was a word that referred to his or her father as dad. It's a word and that expresses closeness. It's a word that expresses intimacy. We probably, because of our familiarity with the Bible and, and with the scriptures, and because of our familiarity perhaps with the Lord's Prayer from our school days, we don't perhaps always uh, realize the, uh, the revolutionary um, nature of what Jesus was saying when he referred to God as Father. It was a big, big thing um, for Jesus to, to teach his disciples to pray, our Father in heaven, and for Jesus to refer to, to God as his Father. And this was a, such a, a massive leap forward, such a massive breakthrough. And, and we, have that, we have the right to call God Father. In fact, we have the right to call God our dad or our daddy because of the work of the Spirit. He brings us close to God as our Father. I know that the term Father is a, a stumbling block for some people because of 
of their history, their personal history, because of experiences that they've had. But you know, when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and when we open our lives to the Holy Spirit, he can transform all of that and he can lead us to our true father. You know, no matter whether you've had a good father or a bad father or no matter um, how you uh, see your past experience, the reality is that you have come to know God as the true father, the good father, your Abba father. So the Holy Spirit um, leads us into a place of intimacy with the Father. Just think of the incredible privilege that is to draw close to God and to be able to talk to him in such intimate language, on such intimate terms. And then finally, in Romans 8, Paul talks about how the Holy Spirit helps us in intercession. And we'll uh, talk more about this in the, in the next session. Um, that Paul says that um, we're weak and we don't always know what we should pray for, uh, but the, the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Um, he intercedes through us. Uh, sometimes we don't know what to pray. We're lost for words. We might pray in tongues. We might, um, we might groan. We, we, we just don't know. But in all of that, in all of the, the pain of that and in all of the uncertainty of what we should pray for and how we should pray and we're told that the helper is there to help us so the holy spirit gives us and reinforces our true identity he leads us into a place of intimacy with the father and he enables us to pray to intercede when we don't know what to pray for so i trust and i pray that as you uh, do this study as you open up the scriptures. I pray um, that you will be blessed, that you'll be encouraged, and that you'll be reminded once again of who you really are, and that uh, uh, you will be inspired to draw closer to God as your Abba. And I pray too that it will give you a new expectation of prayer. So God bless you. And uh, Look forward to the next session.